in lab six, we're asked to figure out which PHP file has the vulnerable code that allows SQL injection on the user info page. If we take a look at the user info page, we can fuzz these application inputs with various values using dynamic application security testing to see if we can cause an error. That might tell us where the problem lies. We can also do static analysis, look at the source code, since in the case of Matilda, we have the source code, and figure it out that way. So static analysis is generally going to be more accurate if we know what we're looking for. Dynamic analysis can be done remotely and also doesn't require access to the source code. So each has its advantages and it just depends on the situation. Doing this dynamically, we can try to enter various characters that are part of the database's reserved character set in order to try to cause errors. So we can use things like at symbols, we can also try single quote, and that causes an error. We can try comment characters and slashes, and a backslash causes an error, and so on and so forth. And of course, this testing can be automated with tools like Zap or Burp Suite. So let's take a look at the error message itself. There is a trace in here. And we can see that the error actually occurred in the file mysqlhandler.php on line 315. There's a call to do execute query. So that would be one indication that the problem is in that file. Now doing this with static analysis approach, let's take a look at that. So we'll go into the directory where I've installed Matilda on this particular lab environment. And we'll start with the user info.php page. In this file, we can look at the source code. Let's go down to where some of the processing is done. Down here is where the output is actually printed onto the screen. And so slightly before that, we can see looping through query results, which means that we have a query that we're grabbing information out of. And that was in variable query result. So let's find that variable on this page. So we keep looking for that variable. And if we go up high enough, we had eventually figure out, well, that gets populated by this call to SQL query handler. And so that's a class. Let's see if we can figure out where the classes are. There's a folder called classes. Let's go in there, see if we have anything for SQL and there's the SQL query handler class. So inside the SQL query handler class, we have these various methods that are called. And the one that we're looking for is the one that can actually execute code. So if we look for the word execute, we see there's several different examples of execute query, and they're working on these different queries. And so in a here, though, you don't really see so much the query that we're looking for necessarily, but just looking at the file, looking at how the queries are constructed, we see a big red flag. The queries are actually contained in the application tier. They're not over in store procedures inside the database, but they're here on the application server itself. And furthermore, 
they're not parameterized. They're just raw queries that are being constructed at runtime. And that's a sure giveaway that SQL injection might be a problem with an application. Now, just parameterizing queries isn't enough. There's all sorts of security problems that can happen to databases. And ultimately, in order to solve all of those different problems with place privileges, SQL injection, direct database access with stolen credentials, what we ultimately figure out is we need to put the queries on the data tier. We need to have the queries inside of store procedures on a database. But right now, we're just focused on finding SQL injection, which is one particular vulnerability for databases in a, within a, a much bigger group of possible vulnerabilities for databases. So focusing on just the SQL injection, we can see the general problem is, is that the queries are being constructed by concatenating together pieces of text until we have a query statement. And then that raw query statement is being sent into the MySQL handler execute query. So one of the questions would be, what's this MySQL handler? We start looking for that. We know that it's something that's inside of this class because it's referenced from the, the this variable. So if we go back up to the top, we'll see that it starts off here as a null pointer, and then it's going to have to get instantiated into an object at some point. And then here we see, well, it comes from the ISQL handler class. So that's almost certainly going to be in the classes folder too. And now we have the MySQL handler. And let's go again, look for the word execute. So that seems to be the keyword. So we have the private function do execute query. And sure enough, those results are passed over into the MySQL connection without parameterization. There's those raw queries were being passed in as the query string, ultimately leading to the issue. So back to the lab six page. And the list from the list given here, we can conclude that the best answer is not user info.php. That's just the presentation layer that's showing the results and putting together the HTML. The best answer out of this list is actually the MySQL handler.php. And that turns out to be the correct answer. <laughs>